On this week's episode of Gaming Buzzed, top three alternate history video games. And here are your hosts, Bill and Reese. Welcome to Gaming Sober, where we talk about video games while not touching a single drop of alcohol. Wait, what? Fake news. Um, uh, so guys, welcome to this week's episode. Um, in light of today's episode being top three alternative history games, um, we started with a little alternative uh, intro for you guys. You um, had me scared. <laughs> Look, you, you still have your pre-show beer out. Can, you, can we do anything not drinking? Uh. <laughs> uh, so each week we talk about the world of gaming while getting drunk. Uh, as I said before, this week's episode is our top three alternative history games, uh, which is really cool because like, some of our favorite games are games that go back and, and change the timeline of the past and come up with really cool and wicked stories. Um, but, of course, every week we're sponsored by uh, New Alcohol. And, uh, Bill, uh, what do you have for us, my good man? We have Raging Bitch by oh, Flying Dog. Oh. Also in full transparency. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> this is our third time trying to film this episode. Yeah. We're so. having technical issues. <laughs> and By the time we finished the episode, I had kind of figured out what was wrong with the camera. All the beer was gone, and we just went... We're just not gonna film this video. Yeah, so, like, so when we were we got to the studio uh, last time we met up, and literally we spent the entire day watching Sir, Serenity and Firefly gag reels because. And then we filmed <laughs> two halves, <laughs> two full halves, and then just went, oh, only forty five seconds got recorded. Yeah, 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 we were having some technical issues, but uh, we are back and in full effect. Uh, let's go, let's crack one of these bad boys open. This is one of my favorites from them. The Double Dog is a little strong. Yeah, I love Raging Bitch. I um I used to bartend at Champs up in Trent on some metal and punk hardcore venue. I miss you. Um, love Champs, and we always had Raging Bitch. Yeah, I remember that. Like, like we do not fuck around. Raging Bitch is a great beer. I'm glad that you brought it up. Cheers. Oh man, as awesome as it was last week when we drank. Yes, it was. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to get into uh, the news. Um, so, for our no, first no, news... No, 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 but, We have other news. But... We both saw Infinity War. Oh, we did see Infinity War. Also, spoiler. We're just going to do it right here. Reese already said we'll do it in post. He'll probably get drunk. Spoiler alert. By the time you guys see this episode, it's oh, going to yeah. be a solid... If you haven't seen it by then. Solid month after the movie has come out. So, um, we're sorry. We apologize, but... There's a lot. You have your chance stuff. to watch us like after you see it. Yeah. If definitely if you want to. So so I'll I'll make sure I put a timestamp in. Um, uh, skip ahead a couple minutes. So for anyone that hasn't seen the movie, and if you haven't seen the movie, you're dead to me as you can be. <laughs> so um, uh, we so, went opening night. Yeah, dude, I was there Thursday at eight p.m. Um, that, see, you had me worried because I had the seven twenty showing, mm. and I texted you right after. I was like, dude, and I didn't hear from you for like two hours. Yeah, I went. Oh, oh my God. Reese did something drastic. Reese is on Suicide Watch. <laughs> but. They killed them all, man. They did. They killed them all. <laughs> like, they didn't kill them all, but they. I, we, were, we were talking about this. I love how it was like Thanos snaps his fingers and kills half the universe population. That was way more than half of the heroes that died. Oh, like, yeah. 75 to 80% of the heroes were killed. I, I also found it kind of sad he only got one snap out of the glove in the end. And, and the, and glove, the, the glove, glove seems busted. Yeah. The glove seems busted. And he had Thor going, What'd you do? And you know, I, I, like, there's so many things that we're going to talk about. We're, we're not going to try and take way too much time, but we have some things that we want to... If we want to discuss all that's a whole episode yeah, itself. Seriously. So let's just, I'm going to hit on some big things. Talking about Thor and Thanos, really awesome to see Thor back to God form. Yes, that yeah. was a... As we both said in our theater, that got the biggest applause. It really did. When Thor comes back with uh, with his new uh, weapon from Nebendalair, um, uh, Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker, which is an axe different from the hammer of Mjolnir, um, he comes in full fucking force like this was the movie that like God, it was really so showed the heroes and how 
actually like all the superhero movies are cool because you get to see other powers this movie like you saw how strong Thor was you saw how badass Doctor Strange was yes. like you see like how much of a formidable like fighter and heroes that these guys are Spider-Man Iron Man put in oh yeah work against Thanos because we all had our, I, her, our uh, theories like he loses his legs that's why he turned to rockets he yeah. loses his arm that's why it's the big gun yeah we were wrong yeah we were wrong I went in with a lot of theories I went in thinking Cap was gonna die I went in thinking Tony was gonna die dude when Tony you thought Tony was gonna when die. Tony got stabbed, that man, got a huge gas. I was like, oh, like I, you know, the funny thing is, I, I was, I was expecting him to die. I, I was waiting for it to happen, but when it happened, I wasn't ready. And it was not ready when he got stabbed. The whole time, I knew the whole. I hope they remember you speech. I knew it was to Tony the whole course, fucking yeah. time. I hope they remember you. It's still such a good speech. Like even it, really it was in all the trailers, but still, seeing the movie, you're just like. Yeah. Did he ever actually say the line, this does put a smile on my face in the movie? I don't remember. I've seen it twice now. He honestly might have, but you might have. I think we were all just so caught up in emotions. I guess that might have been it. Because I remember that was the big line from the trailer. Like, it was like, it's like this does put a smile on my face. But I don't remember actually seeing it. I know you've already said spoiler, but I will say when my most... I forget like a good 10 minute part of the movie because of the one emotional scene we haven't gotten to that yet. Mm. It, it involves getting the soul stone. Mm. But we'll we'll get to that. Um, don't worry. Yeah, that that was a hard scene. That was that was a hard one to get through. So we're talking about one of the big early deaths in the film. About halfway through the film, to gain the Soul Stone, Thanos has to uh, give up something he loves, and that's when he throws Gamora off the top of a fucking cliff. I just like well. <laughs> well, first let's just enter that scene. Uh, it's them going to Vermeer. Ver I'm, I'm, Vermeer, yeah, Vermeer. I might be saying the plan yeah, from yeah, Mass yeah. Effect, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and we get a very unexpected cameo. Ooh. Which I, I really thought it was going to be death. Yeah, and, and that goes into time for anyone that's big comic fans. Thanos, uh, his whole death. drive in, in the Infinity Wars in the comics is the fact that he's in love with death and he wants to impress death because, you know, he can't die or at least doesn't think he can die because he's so powerful, so he's obsessed with the idea of death. And in the comics... Death is actual physical representation. It's Lady Death. Yes, I, I was going to say, for those of you who really don't give a shit what we're doing, spoilers, Lady, it is called Lady Death. Death is an actual personification of a person. Yeah. It is a woman in the entire Grim Reaper thing. Yeah. The skull is a face and all that. But that leads it, us into our cameo. Yeah, it does. Because, so he goes to Vormire to the Soul Stone, and there's a Grim Reaper-esque looking guy, and you're like, oh shit, is this death? And no, it's not death. It's red fucking skull. And no one saw that coming. And no, oh, we had to look it up. Which was really smart by MDB because like, alright, well, I guess like if someone would have saw Hugo Weaving's name attached oh, to the what cast... Do you, what do you think if they just sold Ross Marquand? Yeah. We're just going to give you this credit for a little bit. Yeah. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything about it. Um, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't Hugo Weaving as Red Skull. It was Ross Marquand uh, plays Aaron on uh, The Walking Dead, uh, one, one of the, the, the homosexual uh, characters that's still surprisingly alive on the show because everyone else on that show fucking died. Yeah. Um, and he's a great actor, great fucking impersonator, which we were talking yes. about. You guys can check out his uh, video of him doing impersonations of other celebrities. But he was actually Red Skull, not Because you Weaving. mentioned it to me because if they would announce a cast Red, or cast Hugo Weaving, they would say, oh yeah, Red Skull's back. Yeah, and that would have thrown like, a lot oh, of people he's the main villain now. Movie. Yeah. So, I mean, so a lot of people die. Um, yes. Um, permanent deaths so that people think are permanent deaths right now. Loki dies, Loki and Heimdall die in the first five minutes. That's um, before the, tr the fucking title even shows Yeah. Up. Loki's one was, that was yeah, kind of hard I to make. I didn't see it coming, and I'm happy they did. I'm happy that they, they're not afraid to pull the trigger and, and kill off big characters. But Heimdall, uh, yeah. But also, we now know that probably Valkyrie is dead. Uh, Korg. Korg is... Meep is finally Meep's fucking dead. actually dead now. This time... <laughs> <laughs> the, Korg is the one that hurts me the most. <laughs> I love Korg. Yeah, so so like they start off with that off the bat. Um, later on in the film for big deaths, you get Gamora. But there's a big theory going on that the Gamora is not actually dead. She's just trapped in the Soul Gem, which kind of would make sense because that's he, what the director said. He, himself. he traded her life to get the Soul Gem, so it makes sense that she would be trapped. In the I soul feel gem. like she's gonna be like. There's movies you've seen before, like they're, the person murders someone and that ghost just haunts him. I feel yes. like that's what Gamora is going to be for Thanos. Yes, now. totally, totally. Like, you did this to me. Yeah. Uh, the other deaths, uh, we will we'll get into the well. The we'll only, get into the finale death. The only other big permanent death would be Vision, which is yes. a big spoiler. Um, so Vision has the mind gem on him. It's not really a spoiler. I mean, that's some kind of yeah, yeah, and um, and to get the mind gem, literally Thanos 
rips it out of his head and Vision just fucking drops dead. And that's before the big snapping of the fingers and the big, um, the, they, they're calling it the snapping. On the <laughs> I have not seen it, that. Yeah, the snapping. I would um, call it the ashening. The ashening. The, the, we we, we recall them the dusting or people that have gotten dusted. The great ash. The, I like the great ashing. The great um, ashing, yeah. Do you want to list them off or you want me to? <laughs> Dead. Spider Man. Let's start off right at the top. That. So, so everyone disappeared in the dust. And it happened pretty quickly. With Peter, they hung on to that one. Yeah. They really let the knife dig into your back. The whole, I don't feel good, Mr. Stark. I don't feel good, Mr. Stark. If, I, I don't if you're go. a school nurse and a kid I says, I don't go. feel good now. I don't want to go. Oh, man. Apparently, he improvised that whole scene, too, which... God, it was you're, gripping. You're a great dude, actor, dude. I, I felt more emotionally tied to it the second time seeing it. Like, the first time seeing it, I was like, oh, shit. The, 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 I the, tried the, sending recently to watch it the second time. <laughs> It's from a porn site. Don't, don't, judge me. Don't, don't judge me. Dude, porn sites jump on that shit. Oh, totally. Ragnarok was out like in full HD within two days. Yeah. You just went, I I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hold on. <laughs> I went, no, I watched it. You're good. Oh, but, uh, so yeah, Spider Man. Spider -Man. Uh, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Bucky's gone. That, that one kind of hit. On yeah, yeah, he was the first. Too. He was the first that we saw. He said a line, but now we all forget it because we're all so focused on the people. He said, he, said Steve, he called out Steve's name. Yeah, I know he went Steve, and I think he just went, I, and then he just fell. Yeah, fell. You know. So, all of the Guardians minus Rocket. Nebula and Rocket. Yes. Yeah, uh, Mantis, Groot Drax. Was, Groot broke my fucking heart. Groot, um, um, yeah, Quill. Um, Wait, Quill. Man, you're you're going to go down this road. You're going to go down Fucking this Quill, motherfucker. So, the... They're you're, battling. You're gonna go down this road I right got now? to. I got to. They're battling Thanos and Titan. They're almost. Dude, they had a perfect plan, which Quill thought of the plan. I, I, can't, I gotta give him that. Quill didn't think of the plan. They almost got the fucking gauntlet off his hand, but Quill is questioning Thanos as Mantis has him in sleep mode and finds out that he killed Gamora. And well, no, Mantis goes, he's in mourning, and yes. then Nebula goes, for Gamora. He goes, they left together, only he came back, and now he has the Soul Stone. Yeah, like. So that's when he put it together. I can't. I told you, I get where Peter's coming from on this one. Fuck you if you go, oh, he's still an asshole. It was a dick move, but emotions I like that just take you over. It, I get it. But this is what my big defense was. Like, after they battled Thanos to get the gauntlet off of him, obviously they were going to kill him. They weren't oh, yeah. going to let Thanos live a happy life. You couldn't wait 30 seconds, Quill. You couldn't wait, like, another 30 seconds for him to get the glove off and then get your little fucking gun butt fucking three-piece combo in. But like, that's going to do anything to Thanos. But we finally got that kiss that we were wanting for three movies. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't it. hate Quill, I explained this to you. He was, watched was his mom die. He had to kill his own father after finding out he's the one that killed her. And now the one woman that he actually loves gets killed by her own father. So with him, it's just a tragic circle of life. Fuck you, Quill. I still love you. I'm not as I'm not I'm not as emotionally connected to you as, as Bill. Fuck you, Quill. I, I love you, goddamn it, and, and it's okay, and I have to deal with it. But shit, man, shit. I know. So so we lost all the guardians. Um, we lost a uh, Falcon. Yes. We, we lost. <laughs> yeah, Rhodes really spent a whole lot of time. <laughs> as far as I am from you, <laughs> it's like Sam. Sam? Where'd you go, Sam? It's like you faded us, Sam. <laughs> oh, I didn't see shit. I guess you ran away. That, that to me, that was the funniest one. Um, Wanda, Scarlet Witch is gone. Um, she needed to go though. She was just gonna be tortured as fuck. Yeah, actually. yeah, and I, and I get that. So I mean, better off trying to strange. Uh, better off trying yes. to list fifty thousand people that died. Let's uh, just talk Nick about Fury. Fury, uh, Maria Hill. Let, let's talk about who's left. So on Titan, you got Nebula and Stark, and that was it from their crew that survived. And they're there with the new upgraded Milano, so he can at least make it back to Earth. Which, as I was telling you, it has a new name, but I can't remember it. I think it starts with a B, I, whatever. So on, on Earth, we got Cap, Widow, Banner, who I will stop and say real quick, I'm kind of pissed off that they didn't give Hulk any love in this movie. Hulk is by far the strongest Avenger, and he got bitched out very early on. By Thanos. Tony put up a better fight against Thanos than Hulk did, and that's yes. bullshit. Because when it comes to a hand-to-hand -hand fight, Hulk should be able And that was before Thanos had... Five other stones. He only had the power stone. I feel like they're gonna have a scene where it's the power struggle between Banner and Hulk, and it's gonna be Banner forcing Hulk out. It's. I, I kind of am with you on that, and I also think that because there was no Hulk in this movie, they're leading up to a big Hulk Thanos duel in the next one. And I know Hulk is supposed to be like this huge, like 
brooding dumbass, but I feel like he gains some intelligence because he was. I like that from yeah. Ragnarok. He was uh, the Hulk for two years. Yeah, that that happened in the comics. So, so when, he's more self aware now. Yeah, when Hulk and Banner split in the comic, Hulk starts to become intelligent. There's actually a period of time where Hulk is Hulk is still in Banner, and when Hulk is is on, he has Banner's intelligence. That was a, a long stretch of comics. That's the Amadeus Cho. Yeah, yeah, that Cho. Storyline, isn't it? Yeah, I, I forget what arc that was a part, but there there was a part where Hulk was smart. I Hulk think was, Hulk, has Hulk was as little, smart as Banner. His hair goes up like that, and Kurt. I think that's the Amadeus yeah. Ch- or Cho one. I think that's the new storyline. Yeah. So I mean, so that's really cool. So we so we got Banner, we got Widow, we got Cap, um, uh, we Mbaku. have uh, Mbaku, Okoye, we have uh, Thor, who is now back to God mode. Thor, which is which they definitely going to need him on their side. Also, I really asked Reese before we started the show if he could say Okoye. Because it, it, it sounds <laughs> he, weird coming from. He me. was like uh, Michonne, uh, Denai Gurar. I'm like, okay, yeah, it, it's a okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why it sounds so sexy when you say it like that. Yeah. And now we're back to this. Um, uh, Ant Man. Well, Ant Man's he was not in the movie. So uh, he was not in the movie. They've been on house arrest. They've been laying low because they have him and Clint uh, Hawkeye have family, so they have not been around since uh, the last. The Wasp is the next one. Hank Pym's obviously the next one. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, the thing is, are they going to be in the next Avengers though? Are they? Well, Ant Man is. Ant Man is, but is is Pym and, and Wasp? Who knows? Like, why? Do you, do you think the next one will end with? I had mentioned. I think I, had ta- I think I talked about this with you or a friend who had saw him. They were just a huge comic nerd. Uh, I feel like the Wasp or Hank goes to Ash at the end of the next. Yeah, well, and this is my thing. I and I, that's probably an awesome after credit scene. I think Hank and Wasp are gonna turn to Ash, and that's gonna make Scott. Want to find the other Avengers and join up with them to help to help uh, try and uh, battle Thanos. The next one, you're just gonna have a very tortured Avengers. Like Rocket just watched his whole. He watched Groot die twice. Now. Right. Yes, yes. He watched his best friend die uh, more than once in, in his arms, no less. Yes. Uh, Cap, he watched Bucky die. Which yeah. I don't know if you do again. That, yeah, I don't know if you do that whole. Uh, really? Yeah. Hey, if they are, whatever. Yeah. Well, Although Cap was gonna bang uh, Agent Carter, well, no, we Cap saw him with Carter's uh, daughter. From where was she? From, That's another from good Winter question. Too. Well, she went. Well, she probably went. Well, no, to Ash. From Winter Soldier, yes. Thirteen, Agent Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she so, probably went to Ash. so yeah, so Cap Cap is dating. Uh, um, uh, uh, which is, don't you think it's kind of weird? Can you imagine like being in love with somebody and then, like weird being frozen in ice for like a hundred years and then coming back and like that person's daughter? You're like, all right, this one to be with you, isn't it? Is it his kid? So he never had sex with Carter, did he? No. He, how no, weird they would that be? They mentioned, That'd be some weird old boy type shit. It like. was mentioned again how he was a virgin somewhere. Yes. That might Cap's have, definitely a virgin. It might have been a college humor video I saw. No, Cap, Cap's totally a virgin. Um, I mean, shit. He was a geek all the way up until he joined the army, and then he's been Cap ever since he joined the army. So I don't... I mean, I know they, they you know, they get, like, shore leave and time off or something like that, but I doubt Cap was going to any brothels. I was going to say, he hooked up with a Targaryen, but that's not the name I'm thinking of. Uh, <laughs> oh, what the fuck's her name? Uh... She was in Game of Thrones. She was the queen. She was the queen. Her brother, Cersei. Her, no, her brother was gay. Uh, oh, Marjorie. <laughs> yes, yes, Marjorie. Yes, Cap hooked up with Marjorie. Uh, her brother was the Iron Fist. Yeah, it's, it's a weird <laughs> full circle of this type of shit. Needless to say, because um, we do actually have video games that we need to talk about, do Avengers we? Infinity War was phenomenal. It was jarring. The action was great. The comedy was spot on. It's easily crept into my top three of my. It's in my top games. five. It, um, uh, Just for emotion's sake. It, it was. It was really solid. It was cool to see. We were saying it was cool to see fighters so strong. It was cool to see Strange so strong. It was cool to see Thor so strong. They fucked up with Hulk. I'm hoping that we get some redemption for Hulk in the next one. Um, my biggest question after everything, because obviously. If the after credit scenes is alluding to the fact that Captain Marvel is going to come into the fold, how fucking strong is Captain Marvel? Because Thanos is kind of pretty much unfuckwithable. Like, Thor seems like he might be able to handle it a like little bit. And it looks like he took over M'Baku's uh, little he, mountain thing. So, in, in the comics, and they did a good job with this, that shot was sh- shot for shot from the comics. After, because in, in Infinity Wars, in the comics, Thanos does kill half the humanity. That happens. And he goes to a land and becomes a farmer. And if you see, there's a scarecrow off in the distance in that shot where his that's armor right. is on the scarecrow. He like, he, he like, he's like, you know what? My work's done. He doesn't need to be the Mattayan anymore. And just that, that smile at the end, though. Yeah. You're just like, 
I'm gonna rest Fuck and you. smile on the sun's rise on a grateful universe. But that's like I mentioned the, this to you. I understood his whole I get agenda. It. I get it. I totally do. I How really he thinks it's gonna help. It might not. I would have loved to see him hold the whole like like being in love with death thing, but they didn't have time to make that storyline work. So I'm glad they didn't force it in. So I like I like where where they went with them. Thanos easily by far the best MCU villain there yes. has there has been. I, no, I feel like Lady no Death will be the next one. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, cool. maybe maybe he's Caesar. Maybe he has a good vision of her. I would be okay with that. I would totally be okay with that. I'm very curious how the Gamora and the Soul Stone works. I'm very curious of. In case those of you who don't know, I sent this to Reese. Um, Tom Holland went to a screening, mm. and he gave a huge spoiler. It was people who hadn't seen the movie yet. He just yelled out, "I'm alive!" And then he goes, covered his mouth, and goes, "Have you seen it yet, or no?" So yeah. pretty much, Spider-Man and all them are still alive. If the, you went to Ash, you're, the, there's a chance. If you went that. to Ash, the big theory is everyone that went to Ash is now trapped in the Soul Gem. Which means if you're trapped in the Soul Gem, you're not in the afterlife. So you are technically still there and can be brought back. So so that's the big theory, and that's going to be the big watch. Because look, we got Spider-Man 2 coming out. We got Black Panther 2 coming out. Guardians we got Guardians 3, 3 coming out. Like these, Those three movies right there we know are either filming, have been filmed, or in production. So those characters that died have to come back just in a money making sense just in a logical like this is that's a Marvel really wants to get rid of Chris Pratt like Jurassic series might take off mm -hmm. who the fuck knows <laughs> the Jurassic series might actually take off you're listening to this and my voice is reaching your ears right now and you have any Hold faith on. in the Jurassic no. goddamn hey, he, series he heard that wrong they're gonna film more they're gonna film like a giant one back to back and he's not gonna be available for filming I don't fucking know nah. save myself on that one <laughs> anyway, guys, go see if it's been Yeah, world. but uh, bring a flask and tissues. Tissues, yeah. I mean, I don't know what you're into, but yeah, tissues. Um, God. <laughs> just my first viewing, me and you, just for like the two hours after, we're just like, what just happened? We were like, texting each other, like, because he was in one movie theater, I'm in another movie theater. I'm like, dude, where are you? He's like, I'm at this movie theater. I'm like, okay. Movie was over, and he texted me, and I finally saw it and got out. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Going on. I feel it worked out great because you said you had the extra movie ticket for me. I feel like it worked out good that we both see it in our own the element and on then we can talk our, on about our it. Own, yeah. On our own, just like just so we're not just like sitting there like talking for the rest of the movie. Yeah, it, it, we, we, we literally would have been in each other's arms crying tears on each other's shoulder if we saw the movie together. <laughs> we got so many shushes. I'm like, you fuckers were just clapping. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. It was great. It was really, really great. It, was worth the 10 year, 10 year, 18 movie? 10 yeah. years, 18 movies. It was number 19. Yeah. I feel like you should have one more just to make it number 20. Well, I mean, we got Ant Man and Wasp this summer, we got Captain Marvel next February, and we got Avengers 4 untitled film next May, May 3rd, 2019. The title is a spoiler, which me and you are very curious about. I think it's going to be called Avengers All Your Childhood Heroes Are Dead. That that's the spoiler. I think it would be the title. <laughs> I don't see how they market that at Walmart. <laughs> I mean, maybe eh, no. I'm not seeing that one. Yeah. I don't think it'll do well on subway packages. No, you know, no. or McDonald's deals. F F Funko pops of just like ash piles. <laughs> Get the Funko pop of Spider Man from Infinity War. This is a pile of ash. <laughs> that meme would have gotten you banned. It would have. It would have. <laughs> Fuck. We're gonna make lots of money. Yes. There's a fireplace right there. Um. So, so I mean, literally, I mean, do we even need to talk about what's buzzing with us? Because that's what the fuck's been buzzing with us. Is Infinity War has been on the the lips and tongues. I've, I've been looking. Night. I've been checking IMDb every day. I'm like, all right, yeah, I get it. There's eleven spoilers. They're not really spoilers. Yeah. Like, come on, update your shit. I need to know stuff. So, so other than that, um, for what's buzzing with you, let's take a moment real quick. Um, there has been a lot of awesome um, video game, um, or, or excuse me, uh, comic book trailers that have come out. And I know this is a video game show, but video games and comic books go hand in hand. We're, we're nerds. We're nerds. Fuck over. We're nerds. Um, the fucking Venom trailer came out. Yeah, I liked it. I'm skeptical. I love Tom Hardy, though, and yes. Venom is by far my favorite comic book character, so I think it's still going to be enjoyable, but I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical. Are you with the crowd? How is it an origin movie without Spider-Man? I, I don't care about that. There's already been the rumors Tom Holland was on set, yes. although he's probably not in the movie. Well, the, they're following the Lethal Protector storyline from the comic book arts where mm -hmm. Eddie Brock goes to San Francisco and becomes a reporter out there, and yes. he's a vigilante in San Francisco. So they are following the comics, and also I know there's a company that's using the symbiote, but the symbiote... Symbiote 
not sim. Oh, uh, don't, 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 don't do, don't anyway, join that group. Anyway, come on. So the, the, the symbiote um, does come from space. It, it was it was attached to a spaceship, and that is the origin story. Which I don't know if you know, J. Jonah Jameson's son is an astronaut, and he is the, the astronaut that drove the spacecraft that came back to Earth that had the symbiote on it. So we're gonna get. Oh, no, J.K. Rowling is now part of the DCEU. He is not, now... Not J.K. The, the author of Harry Not J.K. Rowling. J.K. Simmons. Whatever. Those J.K. people. Just kidding. You looked at my shirt and got yes. <laughs> yeah, J J.K. Simmons, uh, the original J.J. Jameson, which was by far the best comic book uh, casting next to oh, God, he Patrick great. Stewart as, as Professor X. Um, he will not be revising his yeah, role. Yeah, because he's a Commissioner Gordon now. He's Commissioner Gordon. You know, that whole, uh, what was it, not even three minute scene? Yes. Just asleep. Um, I, well, there's Woody Harrelson is apparently playing. Uh, apparently going to be Cletus Cassidy, which you guys might not know is the name of Carnage. Um, and the most I've seen about, Car I don't, I haven't read that much of the comics, but I've seen that Carnage is just a fucking asshole. So like, so, I, I don't so, want them to do it to Woody Harrelson because he's, He's still I, think like, be, I think he'd be a great psychopath, though. And, and, and Cletus Cassidy... He was is, in Seven Psychopaths. Yeah, yes, he was. It's a great movie, by yes, the way. Yes, he was. Uh, uh, Cletus Cassidy is a serial killer who's a complete sociopath that was in prison, and Eddie gets put in the same prison cell as him, and when the symbiote comes to break Eddie out, a piece of it breaks off of the symbiote because he realizes how crazy Cletus is and wants to be a part of that craziness, and that's what creates carnage. So the, I'm hoping for an after credit scene or end of the movie scene. Where that happens, and that's how they introduce Carnage, and then he can be in the Venom sequel. I'm that's, hoping, I, that I was hoping cool. for the original incarnation of Venom, uh, where Venom actually bonded with Deadpool first. Yeah, his mind was so twisted it turned it into Venom. Yeah, it just had to leave him because it was just destroying. Which that's that's retcon information though. That that was from that De they wrote that later in Deadpool and went back in time, and that's what drove the symbiote crazy. It's not necessary. It is canon now, but it was not... I would enjoy that, but Ryan Reynolds is... Nah. They're, they're all different. It's Sony's Fox. That's where this shit gets annoying. Yeah, like, so. Jesus Christ. Hopefully, Just sell it, Sony. Fuck off. Hopefully soon, um, supposedly Dark Phoenix that's coming out next year will be the final Fox movie in the, in the Marvel Universe. Which I feel like we're gonna get... Uh, we're gonna... We'll, 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 like, as I get closer, we'll pick a Marvel character to show up in... That end credits to be that final link. You know who I would use to tie it all in? Galactus. We haven't gotten Galactus. We yet. haven't gotten a real Galactus. There's a fake storm cloud Galactus in the first Fantastic Four movie. Um, oh yeah. yeah, that wasn't really Galactus. The Jessica Alba. Yeah, um, but I, Galactus is a cool villain that can kind of marry everything together because Galactus he. He overarchs. He's a villain for everybody. Like, he's a big Fantastic Four villain, but Galactus is a, just a Marvel character that kind of has been in everyone's timeline at some point. I'm glad you brought up Fantastic Four, though. Remember, me and you looked up forever ago that the end credits scene was supposed to feature Fantastic Four, and I had I still need to find it for you. It was supposed to be Silver Surfer shows up. See, and that's what the like, Galactus and Silver Surfer come hand in hand. So I think those would be perfect characters to connect. Those were universes. supposed to be. Oh no, they might be in the next one. Maybe no we way. read that wrong. No we, way. I don't. We I drink don't too much. Yeah, we do. I don't see that happening. I would love for it to happen, but I just. You don't think that'll be the end credits of Avengers Four? No. Oh well, maybe the end credits of Avengers Four. I think meant in Avengers. Oh no, no, no. no. I think that's going to be the end credits. Yeah. I think that's going to be their final link. Yeah, Phase Four is Maybe coming along. Maybe we read that wrong like months ago. Phase Four is coming along strong. We're going to get Adam Warlock in Guardians Three. Captain Marvel's going to usher in Phase Four. Um, uh, Nova, they just released. They wanted. They wanted. Well, they wanted to bring Nova in. The, uh, Infinity War was the end of Phase Three, wasn't it? The, the second Infinity War movie will be the end of Phase Three. I'm very confused. The second Avengers movie will be that will be the end of Because the phase first three. Avengers was the end of phase one. Yes. Age of Ultron was the end of phase two. How is this not the end of phase three? Because it's a two-part movie. I hate you, Marvel. Anyway. Guys. It's been a wild ride with Avengers, and I hope you guys have seen it, and if not, shame on you. It feels a lot longer than ten minutes. It does. It does. <laughs> Eighteen movies. Okay, so now that we got through the emotional torment that is recapping Infinity War, let's get on to uh, our top three list for this week. Which uh, we're not done that emotional torture yet, yeah. but I, it's, it's it's a pain that we all must live with now. So it is. So, so we, we need 
need to. We need to. It's like a hangnail; it just won't go away. You need to power like an ulcer in your the roof of your mouth that you can't stop looking. Um, let's move forward <laughs> into this week's top three, which is our top three alternative history video games. Um, which was one of my just random dumb ideas. That you, but a great idea, a great idea <laughs> nonetheless. Um, do you want me to start? I mean, that is how we got our Valentine's Day episode. It's yeah. how we got our Star Wars episode. We just released that this week in full transparency. Yeah. I, I apologize for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Benny. He's not here today. Came, came right out for uh, for uh, May the Fourth be with you, though. I'm glad that we even only goes released me. Also, I don't know. Benny hasn't come back since the episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, are you surprised? <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> So, for uh, my number three, for uh, top uh, three alternative games, I actually know a lot. I, I actually kind of had a little bit of trouble of uh, compiling the top three. My number one and number two, I knew. So, my number three was kind of like a, a crapshoot. Um, I'm going with Black Ops, Call of Duty. Really? Um, yeah, because, like, I actually, that was, Black Ops 2 was the last Call of Duty game that I played that I actually enjoyed. And Black Ops, if you guys don't know, they go back to um, uh, the start of the Cold War, right? It's the right. Vietnam War, and they, they alter the, the history, the timeline a bit, so that, you know, your storyline uh, fits fits right in with it. You And the first one you play is a character that's voiced by Sam Worthington um, from Avatar. Um, uh, Clash of Titans. Clash of Titans, yes, yes. Um, so it was a lot of fun, and like like the single the single player. Imagine that games that actually have single player story. Lives. We, we have a whole that's a whole episode where people get mad about single player. Camp. Yeah. You you even just had a post about this week. Like really? That's yeah. what, uh, it's I know. Yeah, I digress. I know. So yeah, uh, so but the single player campaign for Black Ops was actually pretty cool. It was a really interesting story. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a shame too that that. Uh, that these first-person shooters are going the way of uh, Battle Royale. Yeah, now. like that. Um, I know. Call of Duty used to have such great stories. Like the last, uh, which one was the one that had Kevin Spacey? Was Advanced uh, Warfare? Advanced, just advanced. the first one? Yeah. Was well, there two now? Well, no, no, there's just one. But the other one you might have been thinking about was the one with uh, Kit Harrington, Jon Snow. Uh, yes. Uh, it's that, that was Conor War McGregor as well. That was Modern Warfare 3. That's Conor McGregor as well. That's, that's when they started picking the bigger name actors. Like, yes. uh, Timothy Oliphant was just in World War. II. Was he in World War Two? Yes. He in, uh, wow, I, I I've been playing a little bit of World War Two, and I um I he's in, he's in the main so. storyline, yeah. Okay, yeah, but uh, but yeah, so uh, Black Ops was awesome. Like you got uh, and even in the zombie one, you had to play as like President Kennedy. You had to play as oh yeah, you had, they had a lot of old. Uh, I wonder where his weakness was. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like a Colossus from Shadow of the Colossus. He's <laughs> going for the back of the head. Um, and the magic bullet. But, uh, no, but I, I enjoyed Black Ops 2, and I enjoyed Come the on, story. We were just talking about superheroes. Magneto, Magneto bended. The yes, yes, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> when they went for that stretch in that movie, I just went, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was my number three. What, what is your uh, number three? Uh, uh, Command and Conquer, Red Alert. There you go. We're finally going to do a real-time strategy game on here. Yeah. I love them. Like, we've talked about StarCraft. We've talked about yes, this yes. This was just one of those ones I remember as a kid. It was just so much fun to play with uh, Natalia, mm. who was pretty much our my Black Widow at the time. Mm -hmm. She just used two pistols, and we just take them all out with one shot. You had the Tesla Towers. You had... The building. No, you didn't have the buildings you could barricade into until later on in the series. But Command and Conquer is still a great series that we yes, haven't really mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, going back and playing it now, fully different than when you were a kid. Yeah, was, I imagine that game probably doesn't stand. Starcraft. Up. Starcraft held up. Yeah. Warcraft. I. Uh, I feel like there's a three on the horizon. Maybe that I can really judge it, but come I just remember this game just because it was Russia taking over everything. Yes, yes. And so we were all had to know Russian, and uh, yeah. we, we would pretty much all be. We're gonna just keep going with the video game references. Uh, we would all be uh, Whiplash from Iron Man Two. I, uh, yeah, I forget yeah, his full yeah. name. Ivan something. I do not know. Mickey Rourke. That's yeah, what we'll, all Mickey Rourke. we'll all be Mickey Rourke. We'll all be Mickey Rourke. In a world full of Mickey Rourke, <laughs> what should you do? Um, I I will, shitty tattoos. Do you I want? love those tragic games, and I love that like. Game companies still try to do them. Like uh, there was one for Halo. Uh, Halo Wars. Uh, um, yes. Battle Middle Earth. Uh, that was a fun one. I yeah. Enjoyed that. You had Tom Bombadil. Yeah. Tom who, Bombadil. who was a main character in the stories book. Yeah. And you know what's actually kind of funny? And side note, um, I work at Broken Goblet Brewing, and we just released a beer yesterday called Tom Bombadil. Which is uh, quite a little, little funny. I only vaguely knew that because I feel like I saw Tom something yesterday in my feed, but I <laughs> forgot. 
Usually Reese surprises me with like, I got an opening beer one. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, I I, I did we'll not get slack that. in. I didn't I didn't bring anything. I didn't bring We've anything both been slacking. It's yeah. this whole camera issue has been fucking. Yes, yeah, it really a has. Bit. Um so uh, my number two and I, I already knew that this was my number two as soon as uh Bill brought Can up I guess? this topic. Can I guess? The fallout? No. What? God no. Like, fallout would be you think fallout's my number two? Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My number two, and I'm just going to go for the whole series, is the Assassin's Creed series. That's right. You told yes, me this. The, Fuck. The Assassin's Creed series. Because, um, I mean, you're going to talk about alternative history. That's oh, what these games are all about. They're all although about... Although, it starts off with, uh, these games are historically accurate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, they did a really cool and good job bringing you back to these worlds of the past. You know, the, the first set screen took you back to the Crusades yes. and, like, you know, uh, to uh, Jerusalem. Assassin's Creed Two was the Italian Renaissance. So the Renaissance and they ran with that for a couple of spin-offs. Uh, that those were, that was a great series. Those are my favorite. In the yeah, that, those are kind of the most popular ones. They lost me when you came to Colonial America. And that was Sorry. three. I never played three. I did play Black Flag, though. I loved Black Flag. I played a little bit of it. I love, love, love Black Flag. Then again, it got to you to hunt down an iguana to make a knife pouch. I'm like, yeah. I'm done over this hunting <laughs> bullshit. Can we do a merchant and I'll buy it? So, I mean, and then, and then we got we had Resistance, we had Syndicate. So Resistance was the French Revolution. Syndicate was uh, the London. the latest one? London. Yeah, was that the latest one? No, no the latest one is Origins, That's which is Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, I love the, like, any time you take, take a game and a story and you try to meld it with... It's real world story. history, you know, it's really cool. Like that, like you said, Assassin's Creed Two was Italian Renaissance. You had Machiavelli. You had Leonardo da Vinci. Was your main inventor who had made all your weapons for you. And there was so. also that secret cult which you can find pieces along the way. Which yeah. I, I feel like I looked oh, the more. Templars? Into, the Templars. It wasn't the Templars. It was the, something on the line. Like your whole outfit becomes by them, and your weapons are theirs. I'll. I'll by the next episode, I'll have it. Okay, we'll but do your homework. It was just such an interesting thing, like an actual cult. Like, you have to track down all their hiding spots and all that. That's why I enjoyed, from two, and maybe the two following games, I enjoyed those ones the most. The first one, of course, is groundbreaking. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, the Assassin's Creed games have been great. Ubisoft, um, they did a amazing job with bringing those games out, and they've kind of been a staple now. Assassin's yeah. Creed games have been, like, on the top echelon of gaming for the last, like, ten years now. Did Ubisoft do Splinter Cell? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I wonder where most of the stealth aspects came from. Uh, Tom Clancy games, uh, Splinter Cell, um, 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 all, um, when I say Tom Clancy, I mean all of the, um, the fuck is that guy's name? Sam. Sam Fisher. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I heard they were going to do another Splinter Cell. I just went, yeah. why? I mean, I played a little bit. I just just stealth it. is just not my thing. We can let it die now. But now, like, they've gotten to a point where, you know all those stealth games where it was like, you can be stealthy or you can, like, oh, Dishonored. shoot everyone. Oh, The Dishonored series. Fuck. I, uh, yeah. It is such a good storyline, but the whole now, thing, now, the more now, people now, you kill. Would that be history as well? Dishonored? Because that was like I'd a weird. So. That was like a weird timeline. I'd and, say I mean, so. Did that timeline even actually, like, really exist? Or did they just make that up straight for the game? I think... I feel, well, my next episode, we'll, guys, we'll know. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was still a fun game. We see, one how those, we see how much research we actually do for yeah. our herbs. It was just one of those ones like, oh, stealth is optional, but the blah, 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 the yeah. harder the environments get, that's where you just went, ah, fuck you. Yeah. But I, I, I'm that person with the stealth is optional memes. I am that bottom half of the meme. Yeah. I'm always just, oh. gun, yeah. I try to be stealthy, and I always fuck up, and then I have to murder everybody. It With has. Dishonored, it's difficult because it's just first person point of view. If it was third person, completely different. Yeah. Like, Asa like Assassin's Creed, mm -hmm. we'll bring it right back. Um, it, then it would be a lot easier, but. It's kind of hard to be stealthy when like you're standing behind a corner and it's only first person and you don't know like is my arm sticking out from behind this exactly corner? you know like, <laughs> that's why I enjoy the Assassin's Creed thing they would give you like the meter yeah uh, the weapons also in Assassin's Creed awesome. were great always awesome I always love the crafting in those and like yeah I know you, like the hunting and stuff like that might get a bit much but I always thought that was really cool especially in Black Flag like you know you gotta hunt like you know sharks and, and whales and shit like that one of these days I'll go back to it but the, the second one I enjoyed the most and it might make me a hypocrite, but I enjoyed always having to buy all the different weapons to increase your uh, not moral 
still standing, but how much money you make. Yeah, the more or less, kind of like because like you know you're uh, you had that like what they call your piazza or your yes. you, yeah where you build your house up and, and the artwork like you had to buy yeah. all that. Yeah. I, I I found that fun. I love that. I love the Assassin's Creed games. Those are one of my favorite games. Assassin's Creed Two, the first Assassin's Creed Two, is one of the few games I 100 percented. I got every collectible. I got every really for fuck yeah man. I played the shit out of. Where's Assassin's that initiative Creed. with a uh, Batman Arkham Knight? Mm -hmm. Fuck you, regular. <laughs> I just don't have the time, man. I don't have the time! <laughs> I, would, I just want to meet the person who had the time to do all that. I know there's people out there. So so what, what did you get for uh, your number two? Uh, it's, as I mentioned, you know, in our first two recordings of this episode, this is number three. Um, it is Wolfenstein The New Order. That oh. is what gave me this whole idea. It's like, why yeah. don't we do alternative history? Because you've been playing Wolfenstein recently. It's right? so much fun. I got stuck at a point where you have to blow torch your way through a fence. I finally got past that, and then I got stuck in another part for like two days, <laughs> where one of the mechanical guard dogs keeps chasing out. I didn't realize you have to run and do a slide under thing. It's just a fun series. Like in this series, uh, the Nazis won World War Two. Yeah. And we're all fucked. Yeah. But you're part of the resistance. You're B.J. Blazkowicz. But um, some of the missions I'm playing are. I'm still in the first one. I haven't gotten to the new Colossus yet, which apparently is amazing. Mm. But um, I haven't played. I haven't played any of the Wolfenstein games since Wolfenstein 3D, like back on my PC. You would probably enjoy this one, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to go through some of the missions. The one you're you break into a prison so you can just get the scientist and get his information and get yourself mm. out. The one you you drive honestly with a suicide bomber, and then uh -huh. you, I, I can't even just go sense. into the detail just of all sense. these missions. It, it's intense. Yeah. It's just such a fun game, though. The weapons are good. Uh, you get your little plasma cutter. You get the Nazi technology. Apparently, there's a whole thing where Nazis were on the moon. They have news stories throughout the whole Oh, okay, okay. Like, pretty much everything the Americans did, now the Nazis did. Okay. It's just such a fun game, and you get to kill Nazis along the whole way. And or you can be, like, one of those people on the internet who are like, oh, we're going to be killing Nazis now in video games. I'm like, dude, Wolfenstein's been out since the 80s. It's always been about killing Nazis. But yeah, we get to kill Nazis in my number two. I don't, I don't know what your uh, well, number I, one or... My, I, I got a good number one, but before I get into my number one, which no one will be surprised by my choice for number one, I got to talk about my honorable mentions, at least. Um, so as I was sitting here thinking about it, like, you know what's kind of funny? Like, would you consider God of War an alternate history game? Because, like, <sighs> is, myth is mythology considered history? I'd, I'd say so, yes. Um, mm. But in a realistic sense. Not really. No. So, I mean, so I guess that's, it's not surprising why we kind Although, of... Although, you know, you had people in the old days that they met Jesus. So. Well, there you go. Um, uh, for my honorable mentions, I, I never really played it, but I, it looked interesting and I heard it got really shitty reviews. I wanted to talk about that, that Order like Order 1859. Yeah, that game. was like the vampire hunting game. Wasn't yeah, it? vampires and werewolves and uh, like... So um, you're like Van Helsing, just not Van Helsing. Yeah, exactly. So you're not Hugh Jackman. I don't no, care that. Yeah, yeah no, no, you're not Hugh Jackman, you don't get to hang out with Kate Beckinsale. I heard um, it was a good game. I feel like I heard mixed reviews on that. I heard a lot of mixed reviews. I It, it looked interesting. I never played it. Um, but one I will mention that I did play, I didn't even play a little bit of it, actually, I'm not going to lie, I saw friends play a lot of it, was Resistance Fall of Man, which again, talking about... I think you showed me a trailer for this. Yeah, the Nazis winning the war type of history switch timeline. That was such a one favorite. where the Nazis, well, because like, that's always like, been the big thing, like, what if the Nazis won? And not only what if the Nazis won, but what if like the Nazis won and then aliens invaded Earth? What if the Japanese won... Bill is going to be very bad at world history in a second. Uh, world War One. No, no, two. They were two. also in they're, two. They were in two. Well, I mean, then it would be that show, The Man in the High Castle, which is. Uh, I, I really need to give that. Yeah, I've old, never, I've never watched. A decent it, try. So. I've heard it's great. Yeah. So I mean, so the Resistance was cool because it brought in alien battle, but it also brought you in a world where you. Where the Nazis were the ones that won World War Two, so they combined that. There was another couple of cool ones that we looked up, like. Um, we looked up a, a whole list, but it was always just so the same ten. Over it was the same ten over and over again. But that one game we, uh, we got to talk about, I feel like, is uh, was, wasn't it um, uh, that Homefront sequel? Yes, The Revolution. It yes. takes place in Philly, in which Philadelphia, is, which is really close to us, guys. Um, like five minutes across the bridge, not even. We haven't even noticed the battle over there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, but yeah, it, but that was really cool. That was where the Koreans had yeah, won. North the, Koreans, yes. Yeah, North Koreans. I feel like we need to be one. specific in this time. Yes, it was Red Dawn. Yes, it was Red for Dawn, real. for real. Yeah. Like Crimson. Chris Hemsworth was in it. And yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I think Jeffrey Dean Morgan and uh, Patrick, no, and Josh, Patrick Josh, 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 uh, Kurt Russell. That's what I meant. Josh, uh, what the fuck, is Josh? Rowan? No, Drake and Josh, Josh. That's Peck. Right. Josh, there, Peck. Yeah. Josh Peck. He he got to deliver that whole great line. Wolverine, Wolverine. I'll admit it was an okay movie. It was I, okay. I, I, I did not see. <laughs> I did I've not. Se- I've seen both. It was alright. I've seen the original. I've seen the original. C. C. Thomas Howe. Who am I thinking of from the original? C. Thomas Howe. No, no, was it Patrick Swayze? Swayze's in it. Yeah. Swayze's okay, that's what I'm saying. He's the saying. older brother. He's the older brother. <laughs> I was yeah. like, am I wrong? He's, yeah. Trouble she was. He's he's, he's Hemsworth's uh, character. Ah. Ah. Yeah. yeah. So. The Hemsworth were having me harder. Uh, I, I don't really. I would say yeah. the rest of the Command and Conquer series for my honorable mentions. Yeah, there's nothing the wrong with that. They are the alternative history. Uh, my number one is like the ultimate alternative history. My my number one um, is everyone knows my favorite. It's Mario. Games. My favorite game series. No, it's what Grand Theft Auto. It's what Mario is sitting on top of. What the? Fu- we didn't even think of Grand Theft Auto. Well, that's not really alternative. Yeah, because that doesn't take place in our our universe. But uh, the assist no. Uh, hold on, don't say it. Stop it. It's Star Wars? Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm wearing my Star Wars Fallout crossover shirt. Um, that, that's what I was pointing to. Um, Fallout. Yeah, I already gave it away before we said my yeah, number three. Yeah, there's, 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 there's no way I could not pick Fallout. The Fallout timeline starts um, during what would have been the nuclear revolution when we figured out we could tap nuclear power. Yes. And, and in Fallout's world, it's what if we never advanced further than nuclear technology. It's not that we didn't, like, you know, advance technology-wise. Like, you know, we have robots. We have a lot of, like, you know, science, science fiction, a lot of crazy inventions. But it's all based around the world of nuclear power. We never got into microchips. Like, we Cogsworth was powered by uh, nuclear power. Yeah. Which I still remember the scene the Conan video when he got to... Oh, uh, he could have played games. Time. That was actually pretty like, Why are you going to pay for heating when this thing's just in the house? Just... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God, so yeah, so um, so yeah, that's that's the Fallout universe. Um, it's it breaks off. I think like fifty five. I think they say yeah. is the timeline when it splits and it fractures. I think if you want to check check the soundtrack. Yes, in the soundtracks, all like everything stayed from the fifties. The the music, the the art decor, um, um everything from the fifties timeline kind of got like frozen in time, and that's the world that Fallout takes place in. And I mean, the Great War and Fallout. Didn't even happen until 2077? 2076. October 2076 is when um, the bombs dropped um, on Halloween or the day before Halloween. I, I, um, I know you didn't play for that much, but to me, you're mentioning like the 50 style. It makes it oddly comforting when you're playing the game. You're, I seeing, love it. you're seeing all these like very rounded shapes or like yeah. big cards. I don't It's just something oddly the aesthetic comforting of it and is creepy. Crazy. It's comforting it, and creepy at the yeah. same time. They picked a cool time to recreate. And what's so great about that, too, is like Fallout 1 and 2 were computer games, or, you know, the isometric top down games. Yeah. And it's so cool that once they got brought over to consoles and, and, and newer PCs, they brought in the music and stuff like that. Yes. That's stuff that wasn't in Fallout 1 and 2. And that was really awesome. That makes the world so immersive. You really it feel really like does. you're a part of that era. I think I feel like people are finding out more soundtrack helps as well as graphics. I, oh, totally. That's my opinion. Totally. I could be wrong. We, we definitely yeah. are going to do a top three uh, soundtracks, uh, top three scores oh, yes. um, uh, episode. We, we, we will get we to that. We talked about that before, so, yes. Yeah. But just the soundtrack of four alone for me was pretty good. Oh, for, yeah. For you, it's three more than anything. Throw three well, well four was great because four took a lot of the songs from three and then added way more to that list. So that was actually pretty cool to play for, and you got to hear, which makes sense, because it's back on the East Coast. So some of the radio stations that existed in 3, you know, through time might have gotten better uh, satellites and better um, um, technology. It could spread their their their, their radio signal. I wonder if MMR group. was in number 4. Yeah. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. That's never going to happen. You guys are never going to talk about us. Oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. We'll, no, be, we'll I, be impressed with Steve next week. What are you talking about? Oh, I would hope so. <laughs> No, I really enjoyed 4. Like, I'm... I, I love I, 4. Yes, you are so much more a bigger Fallout fan than I am, but I only played 4, and it was just such an immersive game. Yeah. Like, you could play... Over a thousand hours, and you would still find me. Oh, totally, totally. I mean, I've put probably about a thousand hours plus in spread over Fallout 1, Fall, I never played 2, so Fallout 1, Fallout 3, New, uh, Vegas. New Vegas, and 4. I've easily put over a thousand hours well, into the Fallout series. I feel like I've done this game before. 
three or New Vegas? I, I, I haven't done this to you yet. Gameplay, New Vegas. Okay. Um, story, I was a bigger fan of story of three. Three had a little bit more heart. Uh, New Vegas a little bit more detached because, you know, you, you're looking for the guy who shot you, which is great and all, but three, you know, you're looking for your father. And, like, you know, it kind of just gave it a little bit more weight to me. Uh, but I, both games are phenomenal games, both huge benchmark games in the action RPG genre. Um, I, I, I talk about it all the time. Fallout's my favorite fucking game series of all time. I have Fallout tattoos. Um, it, I, I, don't, I wouldn't be the person that I am if it wouldn't be for Fallout games. If the Fallout games hadn't happened, would Mad Max, the movie series, have helped you with your post-apocalyptic dream? Yeah, and you know what it is? I don't even think that was a huge love of post-apocalyptic games or maybe with Fallout. Just something, it, it was a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm combination of post-apocalyptic, the setting, the era, that yes. timeline, and the gameplay. Like, it was literally all those things melded together. I say this all the time, which you would love, that if the Fallout series never existed, Mass Effect series would easily be my favorite uh, game series of all time. Because that, that... Sadly, that's an alternative history, so I can't... Yeah. I love alternative how we went, future. I love how we went through the whole thing, like, oh yeah, Bill's going to mention Mass Effect every week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, we gave him up on that real fucking yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. You see how well that worked. Top 10 sports games. Uh, gambling and Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Mass Effect. But no, I agree with you. Fallout is a great game, but... What's your number one, buddy? You already know. I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go your route and take the collection standpoint because I just can't pick one of the three because they're my favorite games of all time. Uh, Bioshock, the Boom. collection. That is the ultimate, ultimate in alternative and, history. I mean, and we said earlier before, like, you know, this top ten list that we kept looking up and all the games, they were kind of reflecting the same list. I would have had Bioshock in my top three, but knowing Bill, I'm like, well, there's no way I can I can take that because Bill's so totally going to have think Bioshock. I looked up how many lists? Four or five? Four or five, easily. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, Bioshock and uh, Fallout. Bioshock and Fallout. Fallout was in the top three? Bioshock, Fallout, and Assassin's Creed. Wolfenstein, all the our choices were more or less in the top five of every list we knew. We I feel like we at. saw a couple random ones, but Bioshock is just such a fun game. For those of you who don't know it, it's if a millionaire took his idea, he didn't want the government having say or any of that, and he just built a city under the sea. Uh, that's the simplest way to really put it. Yeah. There's, there's a much more expressive way to put it, but that's the best way. And you fight your way through the city of things going wrong because you don't know. Once you find something new and great, yes. something has to go wrong. Obviously, <laughs> Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. When you have drug addicts under sea, um, and <laughs> it the, is what it is. And the drugs can give you abilities. That's never a, a good combination. Like, I love the original Bioshock is my favorite, but I love the little sister sequence in Bioshock Two where you get to see through her eyes. Yeah, it is her going and taking from the splicer and all that, but you see what she actually sees. Like she's walking through a fancy hall, and they're like. Fancy dinner guests and all yeah. that. That's what she sees, but infinite. That's really when it cracked the shell that the Bioshock universe took place in the our world, the world as we know it. Um, yes. Yeah. And like, you know, they think well, as you you've talked about before, they brought in um the president and stuff yes. like that. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson were uh, automaton robots. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a very weird sentence to say, but <laughs> if you played the game, then you know. It's just uh. Columbia, I believe, is the finest city. Yes, Columbia is the finest city. I, I like to say it's my favorite game, and I have to go, I guess. Um, <laughs> I haven't played in a while. I've been playing Wolfenstein. Uh, but it's just... Each game is just such a different immersive experience. Bioshock 1, which you have played. Yes, yes. God, it's so in depth. And Amazing. it's just such a good Amazing. story. The story. twist... Yeah. We're, we'll, get, we'll do our whole twist episode. We've talked about that for yeah. weeks. But that's still one of the best twists. Uh, Infinite has a pretty good twist. Two? Not so much. Yeah. Uh, the DLC for one, where you actually get to play Elizabeth, is more of the stealth version of Bioshock. Which oh, wait, wait, for, yeah, for Infinite? Yes, there is a DLC yeah. for Infinite. Uh, yeah. yeah, you actually sneak around Rapture. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. That's really cool. But we, we've we gone into the twist ending of Infinite before. We're not doing it again tonight. Yeah. <laughs> or today, whichever time you're watching this. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's still one of those moments where you just go, holy fuck. And that's how you feel at the end of each one of these games. You yeah. Know, you just go... What like, the fuck? Yeah, like, really. Like, uh, I could go on talking about this game forever. Yeah. I, I really do. It's, it's just great, so great, much. They're great games. They're great games. And uh, and to talk about uh, the topic, it's really cool 
when games can do that, when they can integrate themselves into already established world history, and Bioshock did it crafty, they did it well, they didn't, they didn't force it. Like, Assassin's Creed forces the editor through. Not in a bad way, but it's yeah, very... It's, very so it's not until you get to the end with the apple and eat it, and that's when you go, oh, okay. Yeah, but it's very, like, it's obvious. Yes. As soon as you start Assassin's Creed, you're like, oh, I'm playing a new timeline of real-world history. Bioshock doesn't really give you that from the bat. Like, you find it out. It's kind of like the rest of the world is still going on. Yes. You're just here. Yes. Yeah. And they kind of just go, why we left? And oh, why we started this? Mm. And that's, that's the thing about it. Assassin's Creed, though, again, as we said, it, the game starts off with, oh, these events are historically accurate. Oh, really? So my guy chased him down yes. for a hundred... Jump, jumped across fucking rooftops for, for hundreds of years. We, we chased him across a hundred rooftops and then stabbed him in the throat three times. Yeah. That really happened? That really happened. Really? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but the second time I played it was only twice. Yeah. And yeah. only 50 rooftops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so not necessarily historical accuracy, but but also really cool, like I said, to see video games like that being plugged into that historical world. With all of these games. There's some other ones out there, um, like, wow, that Freedom Fighters game. Yes. Um, was Duke Nukem on one of those? No. I feel like it was, too. Oh, no, that was Alien. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Freedom Fighters, we talked about Resistance, uh, Black Ops, of course, um, yours, uh, uh, Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Um, th these games are really... What about Star Wars? It's in a galaxy far, far, far away. Far, away. But, like, that's not even history that we have logged, so do we even know what was real history at that point? Can we say that that takes place in our world? Because there's plenty of video games from the past we can bring up. Plenty of games. Like, but who's to say that they actually take place in the world? The alternative history idea is that Star Fox could be our future. Could be. Is that the future you want to live in? I'm Animals piloting idea. spaceships? Probably. Never mind, there's no way to finish that sentence. <laughs> that there's no way. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you already like, know where that sentence was going. <laughs> well, you know, I thought of alternative history. I wanted to bring up, like, Red Dead and stuff like that. And, yeah. And, you know, and Gone. And, you know, those are Western games. Like, who's to say that they don't take place in true history? And none of them have the ending like Assassin's Creed, where you're holding an apple that yeah. just sucks the life out of people. Yes, yes. I, I would say Red Dead and all those would count, but not. But I don't see but not again, alternative history because because I like Grand uh, Grand Theft Auto. Um, Rockstar is pretty good. The world that they live in is not the world that we live in. I would like to say that Red Dead Redemption is all is a historical game in the Grand Theft Auto universe. I would love to see like in a Grand Theft Auto game like some kid like. Reading or hearing about the Western tales of John Marston. That I would feel be like awesome. that could, I feel like we do our accurate historical games, which yeah, we're just gonna do this for the camera for our actual list. Like the Warriors, that was an actual video game. That would be a historical I mean, game. It would be I, technically kind of. The seventies was historical enough. <laughs> Not the best of games, but still great. Love that game. That game brought back side scroll and beat them up. So like, I would love to see. I I talk about every time we talk about games, I would love to see come back. I would love to see a remaster of Streets of Rage, and that's what Warriors reminded me of. That yes, it reminded me of like a side scroll or beat them up action game. I remember you know? Warriors just doing a radio. You just had to twirl the sticks fast. Yes, yes. And, uh, and, and, then, and then running. It was a lot of running, which is great. Cause the movie was a big chase. Yes, movie, I, so. I, I know. Yes, we're a video game podcast, but we're talking about movies. I would kind of want to see a remake. They've been talking about it for years. For but at the years. same time, I don't. Yeah, no, don't don't do it. That movie kind of is frozen in time for what it is. It's. It holds up a little bit in the aspect of nostalgia, but it's a 70s movie, it's a B movie, and it is what it is. It exists in that realm, and I don't think that it kind of needs to be touched. It wouldn't be as effective as that movie was, because you already had actual gangs being pissed that it was being yeah. held in New York and all I just feel it could be very... What's the nicest way I can say this? Urbanized. <laughs> Urbanized. <laughs> this, this is the nicest non-racist way I can put this. <laughs> like, like you'll have DMX as one of the gang. I don't yeah. Fucking, it would that, totally be Sam so, Jackson as the, the, the main leader who gets shot. Oh, in the yes. That's a very good point. He, in the very first Spike TV video game awards, he did the whole, can oh. you dig it? Fucking, like, speech. I could see that. I could see that. Oh, it, it would have to be him. There's no one else that it could be. Besides but, yes, bring him DMX back to his acting career. I think the last one was Cradle of the Grave. I believe. Can we, can we just like not act like the and MS think, acting career? And I think the grave is where his acting career went <laughs> after that. Romeo Must Die, Cradle of the Grave. Belly. Belly was awesome. Not really Although the two of his movies just show right where his career went. <laughs> Romeo Must Die. Romeo Cradle Must Die. Yeah, Cradle of the Grave to the Grave. That's exactly where his, his, his film acting Although Gabrielle Union singing that. 
crazy. Yeah, and then, and then Roman Stein. Remember when she was there? Oh man, whatever happened to Gabrielle Union? I think she does TV now. All right. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? If you don't she's waiting for Bad Boys Three. That's you don't remember that strip to strip to you scene? Yeah, she's waiting. She's waiting for Bad Boys Three. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. That, that was I thought that was an awesome list. That was a very interesting list. And not you when you hit me up and said let's do this. I, I was I, like because wow. it was just playing what was that? I was like this game goes really in depth. I was just expecting like just a shooting, just kill zombies. But no, the story is like legit. Like there is a resistance and there's the whole car bombing. I, I I could just keep mentioning random things from this game. Yeah, but it's just it's such a fun fucking game to play, and that's what really just got me going. There are more games like this. <laughs> You know, you know what's a good alternative history game? It's a PC game. JFK Reloaded. Did you ever play that? No, but I'm very curious. It's though. a simulation game where you play as Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, so Jesus. Just, like, and it's literally the, the game, when you start it, it starts up with you in the book depository looking in the window, and you have to try... I feel like I've seen videos of You have to this. try and recreate the JFK shooting, and you get ranked on how... Close, you can get to reenacting the JFK shooting. It's it's intense. It's fucking intense. It's awesome. It's really. I cool. can just see you just chain smoking cigarettes. Yeah, when I was like 23, 24. It's not real enough. It was, this is an older game. I played the played the fuck out of it. I was like, dude, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make the magic bullet curve. I'm gonna do it <laughs> with no magneto. <laughs> or wanted. Yes, yeah, or wanted. Yes, or wanted. I, I mean, I'll, I'll just watch that James Franco series. Eleven. Eleven sixteen. Oh yeah. No. Did that come out? Oh, that was years ago. Oh, I did, I've never watched it. It was a one great and two. series. Yeah. Which you just think James Franco, Stephen King? Why not? I'm I'm on board for that. I, I know you guys know the exact at eleven twelve sixty three. When did sure. Stephen King die? <laughs> Sometime in sixty three. There you go. Eleven twelve sixty three. I don't even think it was sixty three. This is a video game podcast, not a history podcast. This isn't tell, what we is. watched recently on Hulu podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about movies now and then, as you're as you guys that. already know. But um, but uh, so uh, what what have you been playing? I already know Wolfenstein. Uh, I, this week I didn't get to play as much. My work schedule has been all over the Ooh, place. Yeah. Yes, that great new full time thing which I was looking forward to so much, but it's just fucking killing me. Fifty five hour weeks. Ooh, that's I right. work from five PM to four AM, then I get home. I have a beer and then I watch episode of Lost, which just makes me go, fuck I'm all you watch an episode of Lost. Why? It's why? not on Hulu. It's on Hulu when I oh, enjoyed it. Lost. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, you're lost on why I watch Lost. It's a good show. Sure. My girlfriend went, I need something new to watch and went, but you already know how it ends. She's like, so yeah, uh, like, I watched Grandma Girls like fucking fifty times. I went, I don't know. Good point. Good point. I love Grandma Girls. Bro. Although I fucked up there. I started watching them. I was like, it's a matter they're all dead. It's like she watched Grandma Girls. Like it's a matter she's pregnant. No <laughs> spoiler alert for those you guys don't know. <laughs> um, I uh, I haven't been playing. Anything. We're both. I know. All right, so. By the time this episode is going to actually air, the game is going to have been out for like two months at that time. And by the time you guys are watching this episode, I will have been playing God of War. I have not gotten around to downloading you it. You are so dead set on this. I have not gotten around to downloading it yet. Um, that is the next game on my docket of things to play. I still haven't beat Life is Strange. Um, so I, I, I'm the worst fucking gamer ever. I, I'm just I, I haven't played reason. in like two weeks and I'm so fucking busy. hating myself. Yeah. I get home and I like... Started, I start 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 menu and just go. I don't know what the fuck I energy. Yeah, man, it's how it is, man. It's how it is. Well, it's between me. Lost and Black Lightning. If those of you watch Black Lightning, yeah, no, right. I, and even I'm not watching Black Lightning, so that says a lot right there. You probably enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Black Panther, which yeah, let's just get all the racially charged shows. Yes, of course, mm. of course. What audio, audience are we gonna get? Yeah, mm. Black Lightning. Black Lightning. <laughs> Why not? Why not? White not. <laughs> White not. You fucking asshole. <laughs> I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. But um, no, um, no. So I, I, I will. I promise you, I will start playing God of War, and we will, ah, Jesus. Oops, excuse me. we will talk about that. You got wow. yourself nervous on that. Yeah, one. yeah. It's like, it's like, hold on, hold on. I only had two beers. Yeah. Bill, Bill has to go to Parkway Drive show tonight. So I'm just doing all my pregame now. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So so he's in that fun. Because the new album just came out and I'm listening to it kind of, oh, fuck. Uh, what there, did I is just Is the rest of the album, like... 
I don't know if I bought their album or a spoken word album. Oh, man! <laughs> that's a shame. That's my worst. Dude, besides the one song I played you, that's like... That one song you played for me wasn't bad. It was very Metallica-ish. Yes. But the rest are the, very the, slow the, the, openings. As long sing- as I hear Carry On tonight, the, I don't care. The single was not that great. The single I did not like. You played the other song for me, I enjoyed Yes, it. I played the second one. Yes. Uh, yeah, but that first single was... It's only like Godsmack. It's only like Godsmack. I, I just hear Metallica, honestly, in my head. Uh, there's a lot of those are starting as like spoken word things right now, which makes me very nervous. Yes, we're a music podcast now. Too. Yes, as um, well. We're also a metal podcast, as, as you've come to find out. He's a singer of Beyond Dishonor. You know that oh, band that, that doesn't do, do stuff anymore? <laughs> and every time I fucking mention, oh, I'm doing a podcast with Reese. Like, Reese was like, singer of Beyond Dishonor. Like, oh, are they doing anything? Like, I don't fucking know. I don't act. Reese, are you doing anything? <laughs> Drinking heavily and recording podcasts with you. That's, there you that, go. that's what Reese has been there doing. There you go, guys. Stop fucking asking me. His music life is his business. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, all right. So, a little insight. There, there will be some new Beyond the Sound of Material coming. There will be. That's all I'll say. <laughs> that's all I'll say. But oh, the, thanks, Russo Brothers, for that. Ah, oh, yeah, you just, just dangle it out there. Just dangle it out there. We have the title. We just don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the title of the new thing that we want to put out is called 08, and it's going to be reflective of metal from 2008, a grander and simpler time for metal. I'm very interested. It's going to be fun. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Although, I'll probably hear it before you guys do. Yeah. That's what happens when you get to be friends with the artists. Um, but, guys, um, thank you so much for uh, for. Tuning. Yeah, thank you for, like, sticking through this little... I mean, you, the thing is, they don't know how hard it is. They just get to see the finished product. They don't know all the bullshit that we go through to make a finished product. <laughs> <laughs> no, this episode alone is just, like, movie. Yeah, it's like it's gonna work. It's not. It's not working. Oh, maybe now work. Uh, yeah. So, but we we've got things under control. Now we do. It's gonna get fixed on, in post, as everything does. Um, but um, please check us out online on our website at www.gamingbuzzed.com. Uh, we're on YouTube. Um, we're on Twitter at gamingbuzz. We're at Facebook.com/slash/gamingbuzz. We're always posting. Random video game uh, stuff all the time. We uh, we always do little contests and stuff like that. We have shirts coming out to our winners that um that are picked our winners for the March Madness uh, episode. To yes, play. I have talked to one of the winners. Went, yeah, I'll be on your shitty show. I went, well, not that I said you won't be. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So uh, so we have plenty of more stuff coming up. We have a whole bunch of more top three lists coming up. We have a lot of fun events that we're going to get into. It's, it's really warm out now. So we're gonna yes, we can like, finally start doing most of the ideas. Yeah, we that. had so many uh, random clip ideas. You guys just keep your eyes peeled uh, for all that stuff. But, um... Uh, get for, your Oscars ready. Yes, right. <laughs> like, warm warm, warm uh, the warm season up because we're coming for the gold. Um, but uh, from your host, uh, Reese and Bill... Um, oh, that was Reese. Yeah, I haven't drank. You can you can be Reese today. It's okay. I'm, I'm over being Reese. Thank you guys so I'm much. I'm in a metal band. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You're black. What? Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Where did this come from? <laughs> and we will see you guys on the next episode. Yeah, I'm glad we say these are two fucking weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most prepped we've ever been for a fucking show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's just keep prepping five minutes beforehand. Yeah, it's like, oh, let's record it all shit. The camera's broken. Well, good thing we're prepped ahead. You can find us online at www.gamingbuzz.com, Twitter at GamingBuzz, and Facebook.com slash GamingBuzz. Special thanks to Flying Dog Brewing and viewers like you. And don't forget to check out RNS Podcast and Black Mirror Reflections. Let me get a line, 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 let me get